Welcome, everybody, to episode 188 of The China Show. Who's psyched? Who's pumped? <laughs> 88 is an auspicious number. Do you know what auspicious means? Yeah, I do. Why don't you explain it to everyone then? It just means trap lucky. You. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. I thought I could trap you. <laughs> no. uh, 188 mm -hmm. would be like, uh, I want Yao, 88. Yao Baba. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's really good. That's like yeah. really, really lucky. So it's a lucky day and it's a lucky episode, um, but there's a lot to cover. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's get right into it. We're going to saunter right into it with what's new, everybody. And uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the current goings on with this so-called uh, outbreak in China. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to play a little clip from the news. This is from Australian news, I believe. A surge in pneumonia among children has appeared in a second country. Mm -hmm. The Netherlands has confirmed it's tracking a sharp rise in illness after China acknowledged a big jump in cases. Tim Lester reports. Many disease specialists have been reassuring about China's new outbreak of pneumonia in children. Now, though, the outbreak is no longer confined to China. As parts of northern China struggled to cope with rising respiratory illness last week, disease experts elsewhere began to worry. A global infectious diseases watchdog cast it as an outbreak of pneumonia. It reported hospitals overwhelmed with sick children, classes on the verge of suspension and a suspicion authorities were covering up the epidemic. It okay, so now we have to always um, separate fact from fiction here yes now the fact of the matter is yes there has been a big outbreak in china yes many hospitals have been overwhelmed with sick children with pneumonia um, with some reports that it's a antibiotic resistant pneumonia um, and this is a big worry for a number of reasons mm. okay but i think the most worrying footage before we get into the rest of this probably the most worrying footage that we've seen is the following i just want to show you um of course there's all these headlines about chinese hospitals are hiding in how an outbreak but this is from um this previous week up in hebei um we've got footage again of the dabai as they call them the big whites spraying disinfectant all over classrooms and spraying disinfectant uh, all over the roads and the subway stations and that kind of nonsense. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is what happened uh, at the outbreak of COVID. Okay, when COVID was ravaging China, they sent these guys out to spray presumably bleach. I'm sorry. What? As people are saying, it sounds like Winston's got it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am recovering from a cold. Yes. I'm totally okay, though. Um, I'm just in that last phase where, you know, your voice has to catch up to you, you the way you feel. Pneumonia. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the fact of the matter is they spray this disinfectant over everything, okay, which is a stupid knee-jerk reaction, which doesn't yeah. actually help, you know, with the viruses and so on by just spraying around. This is, uh, well, this is bacteria. This is bacteria, so it might help to a certain degree. But at the same time... For the just, first time. Yeah, for the first time. Help. Yeah. The thing is, like, how much damage do they end up causing oh, with yeah. this crap yeah. to the environment? And, like, they, whatever this bleach or whatever they're spraying into all the, the potted plants and all the roadside, you know, trees and things, they're killing off all the local wildlife and who knows what not, you know? Yeah. It's a very bad thing they're doing with this stuff. Yeah. But, okay, whether it works or not is not really what's up in the air here. The fact that they found it necessary to do COVID levels of disinfection again is a worry. OK, because if they're bringing this stuff out to spray the classrooms and spray the sidewalks, the old, the old spray parade, it means that they're very worried and trying to, you know, prevent something, mm, combat this. Combat, yeah, yeah. So that's the right word. So um, that's why uh, we should start to take this a little more seriously. OK, if the Chinese government is taking it seriously enough to go and drench everything in chemicals again then we should probably take it a little more seriously too. Yeah. From that point of view. Yes. All right. I'm so. going to I'm gonna wet blanket it, but mm -hmm. not, not the China part. Sure. Um, from what I've been reading, and I poured over different uh, epidemiologists, and I, I, I referred to interviews with American doctors, mm -hmm. and people are concerned about this outbreak happening in places like Ohio, in Boston and Massachusetts and Washington, yep. D.C. Washington, D.C. So far, it looks like everything can be accounted for, as in 
This is not a unknown like an unknown virus, thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The thing that was scary about COVID is nobody knew what it was. Sure. If you put it under a microscope, you didn't know what it was. You're like, this is some chimera, bizarre sure. nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't, right? Yeah. This is a bacterial pneumonia. It's also RSV that's been going around. It's also a combination of it's flu season, right? Yes. We're seeing higher amount of cases. And so far, nobody's been able to link that to some sort of weird new chimera thing that came out of China, right? So that's yeah. something that I don't think your headspace should go, this is COVID. Of it's course not. not. Sure. But your headspace should go to, well, the Chinese government has had a really big issue with being transparent in the past about quite literally everything in yes. the world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's where you can put on your skeptic's hat and say, mm -hmm. hey, maybe we should look at what's happening in China isolated from what's happening in the US right now. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably not linked, but who knows, maybe there's some rando thing that might might end up over here because I'll tell you yeah. why. Mm -hmm. Although we can trust the doctors in America and epidemiologists that say, "Hey, this is this is not unaccounted for." There are other countries that have put on travel restrictions on China uh, right now, right? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, Taiwan's included. These are not like uh, random knee-jerk countries. These are places that have good medical care systems. Taiwan's got some of the best medical care yeah, ever. Yeah, in the world. And so they made it an honest and wise decision to say, hey, maybe don't go to China right now if you are concerned because there's something going on there. And I can understand that if we were talking about England or something, right, there was a big pneumonia outbreak in England, yeah. then America and England could have transparency between each other yeah. and talk about, okay, this is not this, this is not this, this is this. But we're not, I think it's a once bitten, twice shy kind of scenario sure. where you're not going to say, I'm just going to take your word from no. the Chinese authorities anymore I mean, after what they told yeah. the WHO the first time. Yeah, exactly. The World Health Organization actually asked, we talked about this last mm -hmm. week, asked China for more transparency surrounding this outbreak which I don't think they got. Mm. And the thing is, even if China says, okay, we'll be transparent, this is what's happening, that's not transparency. That's just the Chinese medical experts telling yeah, the WHO. Third, you need unaffiliated yeah. third parties. You need third invest party investigators right. to be able to go there unhindered to yeah. actually check up. So right now, we can never ever say for certain that it's okay, okay, yeah. coming out of China. It could be devastating. Personally, I don't think yeah. it's another COVID. Sure. Sure. Personally. Personally, yes. yes. But it could be something bad too, sure. because we can never prove that it isn't. And there's mm -hmm. one other thing that I do, do want to quickly talk about here, guys. And that is the idea of an antibiotic resistant That's a separate strain. conversation that's worth talking about. Yes. Now, this is something that we've been predicting for a long time, yeah. because yeah. having lived in China, the amount of abuse of antibiotics is off the scale. It's... <laughs> I was going to make a very oft taste joke. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But you know how like the US has that whole drug epidemic? Yes. China's like that, except but they with don't antibiotics. get high. Yeah, <laughs> just, they just take they antibiotics. They just get disinfected from the inside. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> when you go to the, the doctor in China, um, and remember, I trained doctors for many years. That was my main job. Mm -hmm. I worked for a medical training company. So I would go and teach the doctors English and and hospital etiquette and rules because they used to go study abroad. So I worked with a lot of doctors and I worked in a lot of clinics and a lot yeah. of hospitals, okay? Yeah. And around um, not only Shenzhen, but other parts of the country. Now, one thing that happens in China, which is ridiculous, is that if somebody comes in with a very minor complaint, even just cold or flu-like symptoms, they get given a course of antibiotics. It happened, you broke your knee and they gave you a course of antibiotics. Yeah, without any wound. Yeah. Yeah. You just, oh, my knee's broken. Here's antibiotics. Yeah, well, and that was the only thing I was given, by the way. Yeah. When <laughs> I had to go buy my own crutches and knee brace, by yeah. the way. I had to go next door and purchase them myself. Yeah, that's how it works. When I was... Uh, Cap that's do, capitalism. Yeah, when I was doing a test run, there was a big <laughs> event in Shenzhen, uh, like a big a sports event called the University Aid. It's like the Olympics for universities. Yeah. <clears throat> they set up a very high-tech, modern clinic. I've told this story before, but this is very, very important for yeah. context. Now, I was training them, okay, all the doctors in the city on how to deal with foreigners when they come there. Yeah. Okay, it's part of my job. So part of my job was to run a role play. I went to this new high-tech clinic they set up in the athlete's village, mm -hmm. and it was very decked out. Most modern x-ray machine, they sat me on that thing, and they, like, moved me around. It's like a robot. It moves you around. It's crazy. 
But the whole thing is I would have to think up in my mind uh, an ailment that I have and see if they can deal with me. I'm not allowed to speak Chinese to them, only English, and see if they could deal with me. So I came up with this idea that I'd sprained my ankle, okay? Very simple. So I kind of hobble in there. They put me in a wheelchair. There's actually a newspaper article of me doing this test somewhere. They put me in the wheelchair. They, you know, take me to the front desk. They're, they didn't have any proper skills to deal with me in English, by the way, but that's besides the point. I tell them, you know, this hurts. My leg hurts. My foot hurts. All that kind of thing. They took me to the x-ray department, put me on that fancy x-ray machine, took me to a consulting doctor. He um, tried in some very broken English to like figure out what was going on. And then he prescribed me an antibiotic. Not only did he prescribe me an antibiotic, he prescribed me one that I'm allergic to. Now that is our time. <laughs> I just wanted to say that's the state yes. of that whole setup. Luckily for them during the event, the only thing yes. that happened is one athlete got heat stroke. That was the only bad thing. Did they give him God, antibiotics? Probably. The, God forbid something bad actually <laughs> happened. Like, I just want some cold water. They're like, they drink. give him hot water and antibiotics. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is they, they prescribed me antibiotics for a sprained ankle. Okay. Antibiotics is used as a cure-all. It's yeah. seen as yeah. a magic. Like a panacea. Yeah. It's seen as a magic like snake oil. Like you just, oh, you've got a problem, take antibiotics. Yeah. And everyone in China takes way too much antibiotics. Yeah. And so the, the danger with this is, of course, is um, some kind of a, a virus or a bug that manages to overcome antibiotics. Yeah. You know, we've been calling this for, yeah. for 10 years because if you keep treating random little things mm. with antibiotics, it's too much of it. And the bugs adapt, you know, and that's how it works. And we could be facing at some point in the near future because of the huge population of China and the huge amount of like antibiotic abuse that happens there. We could face a situation where something bad and nasty like pneumonia comes along that is Immune to antibiotics. Yeah, I think uh, the best logic to understand this, because you might say, that's that's ridiculous. All they have to do is stop, right? But you have to understand that when people think, and I think this this boils down to the way leadership and politics even treat China wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you look at China, you often hear that it's some foresight. It's got infinite foresight. It's always thinking about the future. It's mm. 10 steps ahead sure. of the U.S., <laughs> Stupid countries like the U.S. only care about the election cycle, so everything resets. There's no actual progress. Whereas China, they are. Oh, oh they, yeah, they always got they a plan. They may be, mm. they may be authoritarian. They, you may even disagree with everything they do. Yeah, but dang, they got it sorted out, and they've already figured everything out, right? Yeah. And then it's it, it, until you go to China, you just you might believe that until you go there and you say, this has got to be the most knee jerk place yeah. i've ever been Hap in my has entire a chaotic life. it's chaos mm. there's nothing figured out right no. the only thing figured out is grand government projects like things like high speed rails and bridges which often fail yeah now you put that in the context of antibiotic resistant drugs mm. and it all makes sense because you're not going to get people to stop taking antibiotics as a panacea for everything because that's the quickest solution it is the quickest solution and that's how china deals with everything i think that's the yeah. greatest analogy you could say is china is just the way China operates politically is basically taking antibiotics every yeah. day. <laughs> and it's ridiculous to the point where patients will demand, even if there's nothing wrong with them, they're like, well, just give me a give course me of anyway. antibiotics they'll, anyway. They'll, I'll one-up you, mm -hmm. and you'll agree with me on this. Mm -hmm. they, won't even, they won't even ask for it. They'll go buy it themselves. Yes. They'll find, they'll make connections so that they no, always have antibiotics you, at home. You can buy antibiotics over the counter yes. in China. Yes. So, you know, you just yeah. go buy it. Yeah. It's no big deal. A uh, doctor said it's okay. Yeah, but you could just go to the clinic yeah. downstairs and buy yeah. it. You know, the thing is, um, I would like to put this out as a general warning that there's a huge chance that at some point, one of these years, we're going to see an antibiotic-resistant uh, an outbreak come out of China, a that's, super bug. That's not outlandish at all to predict yeah. that because many scientists around the world would agree with you, including Chinese scientists yeah. have warned against that. Yeah. But science often just gets bookshelved in <clears throat> China. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, when I see this kind of thing happening, and I've heard, I've heard associated to this outbreak, uh, antibiotic resistant pneumonia. I've heard that mentioned. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's what it is. No, no. But that's why I would like to pay extra close attention sure. to this. And I would like to, just as um, kind of a public service announcement for everyone out there, we've had a discussion about this whole outbreak in China. We both agree that it's most probably not serious. Yeah. Okay. But to say something is probably something leaves room for error and leaves room for doubt. 
Okay, and because of that, I would suggest that everybody, as usual, just like before COVID, when we were telling everyone, make sure that you have a couple of tins of baked beans stashed yeah, we, in the we cupboard. we never told anyone to freak out, but no. we said make sure you have stuff just in case there's yeah. a lockdown at some yeah. point. I'm, I'm just saying, just make sure that, as always, you at least have a slight amount of preparation, yeah. because... We never know what's going to happen You never next. know, right? This could it's be, a good thing to yes, do anyway. This could just be a seasonal thing. Yeah. This could be, uh, what was that called? Immune debt? Yes, immune debt. Is, it's actually a really interesting phrase. It's yeah. the idea that if you've been locked down for a long time like China was. Yeah, your immune system hasn't been able to keep up. You got to pay back, yeah. right? You got to pay the piper, pay the piper my yeah. friend, right? Because you're yeah. not out there mingling, interacting. You're not even shopping mm-hmm. in grocery stores, right? You've been locked down. You've mm-hmm. been stuck in these dumb lines where you're getting tested all the time, right? This lockdown was nuts, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now you got to pay up, right? Yeah. The diseases and the, the viruses and the bacteria, they're all like, well, I just found a new playground that is completely untouched. There's yeah, exactly. no one playing here, yeah. and they can populate that playground. Exactly. So um, while I wouldn't suggest panicking and worrying about this no, at the same I time, I also think that it's good to at least be prepared. Yes. In a, in a small way. I, I think that's a good Get some practice. rice Yeah, I think that's a good practice, period. Yeah. Period. Just get some kind of stuff that can last a year yeah. or so and chuck it in your cupboard. It's just always good to have that anyway. Yeah. Right? A couple of bottles of water or something like that. Yeah. You never know. Just in case. Just in case. But we, yeah. You never know. You never <clears throat> so know. I think that's the be all and the end all of this particular thing. We just have to keep an eye on it. And we will, of course, on the show here, if we notice anything or get any news. I have been speaking to my friends in China who are doctors. Mm-hmm. And they have confirmed that there's been a huge increase. Yes, yes, I will acknowledge that. Yeah, in uh, specifically children mm-hmm. getting pneumonia. Um, they've uh, they've confirmed this, but at the same time, they also are telling me that this is uh, not like, like super out of the ordinary. Yeah, I think I think the most important thing to end with here is, mm-hmm. yes, be prepared. Yes, yeah. we can never really trust what's going on. Yes. But the difference in reaction of the people we've spoken to this time versus last time is wildly different. Mm-hmm. You know how China last time was like, it's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's just the, a flu. The people we talked to didn't say that. No, no, no. <laughs> the people we talked to, the doctors and everything, they were like, no, this is not fine. No. Right? Yeah. This time, they're like, it's probably fine. Yeah. That's a little different. A lot anyway, different. we'll uh, keep you up to date on that. Yeah. And if, if we figure something out, by the way, that's very important, we'll have a breaking episode sure. anyway. Sure. Now, this I wanted to show you all here. Um, <clears throat> this is a tin of Quaker oats, I believe. And you can see there, it says like the uh, origin of manufacture. I'm quaking in my oats. Yeah, it says... Zhongguo, Taiwan. Ah! Yeah, so it says... Maybe you can tell everyone what Zhongguo, Taiwan means. That means uh, Taiwan, province of China. Yeah, this is uh, chi- China's fantasy. You know, the CCP's fantasy. They restuck that you know, like, you, Yeah, you know, <laughs> when, you know when you have a fantasy football league or whatever yes, you call yes, your team yes. something? Yeah. This is China's idea of a fantasy country. Yes. Or a fantasy part of their country. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting part. Let's take a look closely. Okay. Watch this. wonder what's actually behind the sticker. Oh, uh, it's just Taiwan. Just Taiwan. Because Taiwan is a country. <laughs> Simple as that. That's, a, that's an attractive statement. But here's the thing. Whoever the shop or who, the distributor of this is, is forbidden by law to sell this in mainland <laughs> China unless it says <laughs> yeah, the, the fantasy version. You it know what I mean? It would be like if it said Canada, province of the U.S. I'm serious. Yeah. That's what it, if, like if the U.S. put those stickers on. Canada, province of the U.S. Yeah. I mean, it's like going to someone's house, um, like an eccentric wanker who who only calls, you know, instead of Coca-Cola, he calls it Sodi Pop or something, and you have to call it that in his house. It's like, hey, can I have a Coke? It's like, we don't say we that say word. Yeah, we say Sodi Pop. And if you say that again, you're not allowed to come into these doors. Blow in the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, just had to put that there. <laughs> now, um, what do we got going on next? Yes, this is kind of interesting. <clears throat> so this is a factory toilet. Okay. I want to just point out to everyone once again the turd paper basket. Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I don't miss those. Do you? No. Everywhere you go in China, mm-hmm. when you go to the bathroom, there will be a little, usually like it's like a pink bag. or something. Yeah, a little yeah. plastic waste bag. Plastic box. waste bag with the cheapest garbage bag you've ever seen in your life in there, if it even has a garbage bag, full of poopy tissues. Yeah, because you cannot flush your tissues down the 
uh, toilet in China because it can't handle it. Oh, Aunt Winston, I, mm -hmm. my brain's kind of misfiring right now. Yeah. I'm having some connections that are just not making it. Yeah. China's got the fastest high-speed rail in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah, yeah. China's got the most impressive city centers. They're building at an astronomic pace. But you can't flush your toilet down the your down toilet, the toilet paper down. Toilet yeah, paper no, you down can't. The, the the plumbing can't handle it. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you can't drink the water either. No, no, you oh. can't drink the water. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Anyway, it's kind of gross because yes, indeed, those are soiled toilet papers. There is actual smears of turd on those papers. Yeah, it's it's truly vile. It is disgusting. Um, but that's not what the point of this video anyway, is. Anyway, yes, yes. And I get that that's like that in a lot of countries, by the way. But sure. it was, it's a rude r reminder for yes, me. Yes, exactly. Um, so anyway, this is getting out of his toilet. He turns around and he just wants to show you something. There's a freaking... Oh my goodness. There are cameras pointed at every stall. You know why that is? Why? It's pretty obvious. Why? Because they want to make sure that people <laughs> are not spending and wasting time on their phone in there when they should be at work. Because, yeah. and I can yeah. corroborate this, Mm -hmm. There was another clip of a company that was putting in, I think we covered this, they were putting in to toilets with timers and, and Oh, even in the malls cameras. and stuff, they're yeah. doing that too. So that people aren't just chilling in there all day, playing on their phone. Yeah. Like playing Angry Birds or something. Well, I mean, think about it. If you're working That's at a factory do, right? in China, right? You've clocked in and you are on the sweatshop line or whatever. Mm -hmm. Your only respite really is going to the toilet. So you're going to stretch it out, right? Yeah, I think people don't understand the lack of i mean this guy obviously took the video because this is outlandish mm -hmm. but the the just the general lack of of privacy in general that you oh, kind yeah. of you just deal with in china uh, a lot of bathrooms don't even have dividers you, yeah remember you, we've yeah, shown that's that what to i was you? gonna say is that that's <laughs> yeah. one of the most shocking things i told you i said this a million times but i had to go to the bathroom and i had to you know go and there was a line of men right next to me like it's with this, a trough, yeah, this, just on a trough, far, right? This far, yeah, 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 in a trough, and they're squat, pooping. Mm -hmm. Yep. One guy's playing Game Boy, I'll never yep. forget it, and I didn't even know what to do. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. You're And people, like, look at each other and stuff. Yeah. I don't want to watch someone else take a turd. You know when you I don't want to see his turd in face? A urinal? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, like, straining turd face. That's what I'm saying. You know in a urinal, <laughs> you, you have that code of ethics yeah. where you, like, don't look over. You definitely don't look over at the no, no, the you don't Wang do Lao G, you know no, what I mean? No, no. You mm. definitely don't do that. You stand there and you you make space for the next the person next to you, and you don't mm -hmm. you don't really interact. If you're friends, you can interact. You can sure. chat or whatever. Sure. But in China, I mean, that trough was there. People were making eye contact while while mid poop. Yeah, watching and each other poop. Watching each other poop, reading the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that kind of you got, you got to understand that's how it works in a lot of the especially sure. the rural areas. Not even just the rural yeah, areas. True. Downtown Beijing. That's true. Last time I was in Beijing, I filmed the, the hutongs, which are those very famous like alleyways, mm. and they're touristy and everything. They just mm. recently put in new toilets, but the new toilets were just like that pit toilet, but next to each other mm. with no dividers, like about eight of them in one little yeah. cubicle. And yeah, that's I've it. You that. walk in, yeah. brand new, nice, nice tiles. Very fresh. Very, very new. But it's just, there's no dividers, nothing. So You're chilling with other people. Yeah, it's just one of those cultural, um, you know, what do you call them? Like, it's a culture shock thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's so the toilet thing with the cameras, not nice. I don't approve. You know what I mean? Yes. Stop doing that, China. It's bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> now we can move on yes. to Soft Power Hour, everyone, which is our main part of the show. And we've got quite an interesting one for you today, okay? And this is um, something that has affected us personally. But I wanted to show you a little clip first, okay? Um, now, for those of you who are interested, let's just get this in here in the background. We have li all the links to all this stuff I'm in the description. <clears throat> but let's just watch this together, okay? Okay. And then we'll comment, so let's go to meet a group of activists who fled the Chinese government crackdown in Hong Kong. They've been approached by someone claiming to be a journalist, but they suspect he's spying on behalf of the Chinese state. That guy over there, by the way, his name is Fin Lau. Okay. And he is one of the um, well-known pro-democracy protesters, mm. like protest leaders uh, from Hong Kong. Okay. He's fled Hong Kong to the UK. Okay. As many have, I think 166,000 Hong wow, Kongers. Wow, that many. That's nuts. Yeah, have fled to the UK. And the UK, didn't they do something where they like let them in or whatever? Yeah, but oh, yeah, but remember that Hong Kong used to be part of the whole um, 
uh, Commonwealth thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes so sense. So if you've got a Hong Kong uh, passport, you could go to the UK. That makes sense. But yes, the UK did have a special provision that actually allowed them to move there. Because yes. I, I don't think you could just go live there normally. But now they, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they could it, apply. Like, yeah. So anyway, he's part of a bunch of, um, you know, basic dissidents, basically dissidents from Hong Kong. Yes. Who the Chinese government hate, by the way, and have been tracking them down and trying their best to silence them and uh, screw them over from the beginning of these protests. See, you know who I, you recognize them. I recognize the lady that's interviewing. She is, um, she was a vice journalist. She did amazing work. Oh, okay. So I guess she's, what's, what's this publication? This is called Channel 4 Dispatches. Okay, Channel 4. So I guess she's working for Channel 4 now. She's done great work. She's like an investigative journalist. Okay, anyway, let's continue on with this. Super important. I don't feel safe in the UK. Whenever I'm walking on the street, then I would try to look around. Maybe every two minutes, I would try to see if someone has been following me. We know that the Chinese intelligence services are targeting the UK prolifically and aggressively. That's according to Parliament's Intelligence and Security Committee. One of their main goals is to silence anyone here in the UK who's critical of the Chinese Communist Party. We've had a phone call. Finn Lau believes that there could be someone who's attempting to spy on this group that he's a part of. This group of Hong Kong activists is called Global D-Twin, and they essentially work to try and persuade UK cities and other cities around the world to cut their ties with cities that they're twinned with in China. These are the emails that you guys got, right? Coming from a man who claims he's called Richard Vong. OK, so this is important. OK. They've... They That's were, not a Chinese name, by the way. No, um, it's not a Chinese name, um, but actually it was spelt in the email foot as V-O-U-N-G, so maybe like Vietnamese, maybe? Bong, maybe, yeah. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is <clears throat> they were contacted by email by a guy, Richard Vong, mm -hmm. who claims to work for the, I believe, the Toronto, she'll, she'll explain in a minute, but the Toronto Guardian. Um, and the whole point is, he contacted them as a journalist. Oh, okay. To say, you know, through the emails to so say... So he's like, I want to interview this yeah. Hong Kong activist <clears throat> guy. Yeah, no, oh, he, okay. he emailed the Hong Kong activist group or whatever, and he's like, hey, look, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I work for this Canadian newspaper, online oh. newspaper. I would like to interview you I about your, like, what you do, <clears throat> that kind of thing, right? So now that we know that, let's see what happens. Richard claims he's working for the Toronto Guardian an online newspaper in Canada. It seems to be a fake email address. We found that the email domain was created just a few hours before he sent us that request. And we've since contacted the editor of the Toronto Guardian and this person doesn't work there. He's never heard of this person. A forensic analysis of his emails by the D-Twin activists showed some of them were sent from Shanghai. We're expecting to speak to someone who looks like this. This is a picture from his... So he's WhatsApp. pretending to be a journalist from Canada. This yes. This guy. Yeah, I get it. So this this guy's like, hey, you know, obviously they they went and created a domain, probably like torontoguardian.com mm. or something, you know, slightly different from whatever the official one is. Yeah, or they like there. did one of those things where they like, that you can say it's from there, but you like mask it or whatever. You yeah, know what I mean? either way. So it looks like an official email. Spoofing, that's what yeah. it's called, right? Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's an official email. It looks like a legitimate publication, a legitimate journalist, right? What's with the basketball dribble in the background? <laughs> well, you got to understand, man, there's basketball yes. players over there. Anyway, let's continue. This is important, guys. Pay uh, attention. He's provided, and this is the photo from his telegram. Should we try dialing in? Yeah, sure. <gasps> he's coming, he's coming. Okay. Hello. To our surprise, he's not Chinese. Is it Richard? Hello. And just want to make sure I didn't pronounce your name wrong. Are you Richard Fong? Yeah, that's oh. oh, that's a white guy. So, okay, the first important thing is they've now confirmed. Mm. Are you Richard Vong? He's like, yes. So that's this correct. is a fake journalist from the Toronto yes. Guardian. Right. And uh, here's the important part is that he confirmed that he is this Richard Vong character. Oh, okay. Right? He said yes. That's he said right. yes. He said, I just want to confirm. Are you Richard Vong? He's like, yes. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. So... He has confirmed that he's the guy been sending the emails, or at least he is the, the guy who's supposed to send the emails. Okay? okay. Let's see what happens next. Okay, I see. Because you look different from, from the Telegram photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> he claims to be writing nice. about the D-Twin group. And we're trying to really put together an article that our, our viewers would be interested in. 
He started peppering Fin Lao with questions. What specific changes do you hope to achieve by ending the sister city relationship? How do you focus your efforts? Have you been able to evaluate the impact of those initiatives? Your Vancouver is with uh, as a sister city with that. Am I saying this right, Guan Guan Zhou? Am I am I saying that right? Have you visited China before? I have visited Shanghai. All right, so we can see where this is going, right? The guy's digging for a lot of information mm. about what they're doing and trying to gauge responses that they've gotten. Mm. Basically, just trying to find out anything that they can, you know, pick at or, you know, or use. at least like start the conversation to warm him up, mm. right? It's classic, like getting someone to trust you and be friendly, right? And then later it'd be like, well, where, you know, where are you planning on having your next activist rally, oh, right? Sure. Something like that. That's that's e probably either way. The guy's getting in with all the questions to find out a lot of vital information. Yeah. <clears throat> now that's the important part. Uh, very briefly, and Hong Kong, very briefly. Hey, excuse me. Hi. Hi, I'm just interrupting here. I'm Isabel. I'm a journalist from Channel 4 Dispatches, and I have a few questions of my own to ask as well. Are you spying on Hong Kongers on behalf of the Chinese government? Yeah, that's a good question. I had one more question that I want to ask after that, uh, but the answer is no. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious to, to as to why you're, you're, you're questioning me about that. Well, because, you know, we spoke to the Toronto Guardian's editor. They've never heard of you. You've never worked for them before. I'm not sure if you reached the correct organization. There's only one Toronto Guardian. We checked your email <laughs> address. The IP goes back to China. Your email domain is fake. It was created 30 minutes before you first reached out to this detwinning Hong Kong group. I don't know much about domains or any kinds of emails. I'm just trying to understand, you know, what your real name is. Yeah, uh, very good question. So, Richard, and uh, I can send all the, the documents and, and whatever you need to continue this conversation in the future, okay? How do you spell your surname? Uh, so, again, these are uh, very personal questions. Don't it's strange that. that you don't know how to spell your own surname. Who's your boss? Who's my boss? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's pretty uh, specific. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate for this interview. Why are you focused on spying on this group? Again, these kinds of accusations or, or words may put me in a bit of a, a, a pickle. So uh, I'm just going to end the meeting there, and uh, I wish you guys the best, OK? Thank you for taking the time, Finn. And uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but I hope you guys have a are great you, future. Are you, in fact, can you shh? He's hung up. Yikes. OK, so I've... What I've, a weird accent, that guy. I can't even pin... It's so weird. It's a little bit weird, yeah. I think probably on purpose. <laughs> Maybe. But I like the fact that he, uh, first of all, can't spell his surname all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, and he refuses to mention who his boss is. Interesting. If you were uh, a legitimate journalist and you've approached a group, I am so on and so on, and I work for this organization, mm -hmm. and you get asked... You know, how do you spell your surname? You just said straight out. You wouldn't have a problem with that because you've already given that information. Yes. Right? Unless yeah, you, that's true. Unless you gave false information. True. <clears throat> you know what, Finn, this Finn guy? Yeah. That's his name, right? Yeah, Finn yeah. Lau. Finn Lau, you know what he should have done? What? He should have asked him his source <laughs> right off the get-go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what's your source? Well, it's... My source is that I made it the f*** up. <laughs> I agree. Anyway, um, yeah. <clears throat> then when asking, who's your boss? <clears throat> If I was fuck, if I was working for the Toronto Guardian, they asked, "Who's your boss?" I'd say whatever Ned in. You Everyone know. thinks he's Dutch, but we're not. Yeah. we're not here to point fingers. We're, yeah, he can answer to the. <clears> well, <throat> well, it, it, this has a twist. Okay, yeah. guys, here's the twist. We discovered Richard's real identity, an American who'd spent oh. five months teaching in Shanghai. Interesting. He didn't respond to a request for comment, and we decided not to reveal his real name but it added fuel to suspicions that he may be working for the Chinese state or someone who's connected to it. Okay, so guys, um, Interesting. so it turns out he taught English, presumably, mm -hmm. uh, for five months in Shanghai. Okay. <clears throat> and his name he's was... American, I guess. Yeah, he's American. And his name wasn't Richard Vaughn. Obviously. <laughs> okay. What? The, was well, that up for a debate? <clears throat> no, but I mean, I just, it's its proven. Sure, sure. It's proven, okay? Well, you know, when in, like, this is a proper media publication. The yes. reason that they won't include his name and, like, his real name and things like this is because this probably will go to a real investigation. So until someone is up for yeah. public investigation, you're not going to know him. I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, if uh, any, I'm just curious if anyone's ever, like, met 
the guy. No, yeah, it's they. That's no, not, I'm I'm yeah. curious yeah. because if they have, it might surface in the future. Obviously, yeah. obviously, yeah. We might find out. Either yeah. way, the fact of the matter is, he's caught lying. He yeah. was caught pretending to be a journalist for a a publication yeah. which he didn't work for. Yeah, and this, by the way, is fairly common. Yeah, this is the first sure. time that we've seen this caught up. But I have a a bit of a follow up to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, this that they've got on the screen is quite easy. The Chinese embassy said the so-called monitoring and intimidation of so Chinese dias diaspora is sheer disinformation. Um, it's not it's disinformation. Prolific. It's one hundred percent true, and it happens to us too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we can and the whole dissident community. Yeah, we can guarantee you that it is very, very true. Okay, what else did they say? Um. um. Oh, oh, I missed the last little slide. Yeah, I guess it's not too important. Okay. This is important. Though. Yes. Okay, this is a, a personal friend, okay? Mm -hmm. Somebody that I know. His name is Hazza. Um, and uh, I spoke to him about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this whole situation. Because he has personal Because he, he has personal experience with this, okay? Mm -hmm. So a little bit of background about Hazza is he um, moved to China. Yeah. And uh, he became very popular because of his music. Australian guy. Yeah, he's Australian. He used to sing um, these kind of very interesting um, songs. He has some very uh, popular songs, actually. Yeah, oh, very, very, very popular. Catchy yeah. too. Very, very catchy and popular songs. And, uh, you know, he became very popular in China. His yeah. Chinese is immaculate, okay? Yeah, he yeah. studied and lived in China for, you know... He's in Guangzhou, right? Yeah. Yeah. The longest time. And he became a presenter. Yes. Okay. For Guangdong, uh, for Guang, uh, Guangzhou TV station. State, state yeah. television. So, local, so, local television. Yeah. State. state TV. Yeah. And in fact, he interviewed me about our documentary. That's and right. he, I just wanted to show you a little excerpt of that before we continue, just to show that uh, I mean, we know the guy. Yeah. Okay. There's me and there's him. Right. Got someone saying, oh, you got to try the cow dung hot pot. Which, what? Cow yeah. dung hot pot? <laughs> yeah. Which is basically they take the the semi-digested grass out of the intestines of the cow Whoa. and they make a hot pot out of it and we ate that we yeah. just had to go try that because it just sounded so bizarre he's okay. a great guy by the way he's a fantastic yeah. guy anyway he was approached <clears throat> by agents of the chinese government mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they tried to get him to do this spying yeah. for them like this very exact, very this similar exact the exact thing because yeah. take a look all right We've linked, by the way, not only have we linked the the show with this whole expose in yeah. down below, but we've linked the article, Hazza's article, which I've taken these screenshots from. <clears throat> but this person called Susan, this is one of the examples, contacted him and wanted to meet up with him, okay? And she proposed uh, basically that he spy for the Chinese government, okay? And this here's a quote from the, the article. says, <clears throat> Basically, what they proposed to me was that I would use my position as a journalist and a television host to reach out to Australian politicians and high-profile people wow. here in Australia. Yikes. Mm -hmm. And I would ask about certain topics that they would give me to find information under the guise of it being an interview for television, radio, or publication. Wow. So you see, this is something, this, by the way, was... Uh, from May, I believe this year, this article came out. Yeah, this this uh, message that was from twenty twenty one. Yeah, of course. The the that that, that was when they actually tried to meet up. Well, they did. He met met up with her sure. in a coffee shop. Um, but this is something that they do: mm. is they get people to pretend to be journalists. So we've yes. seen this happen before. It's happened to us. Yes. People that pretend to be journalists because most people are more open to speak to a journalist about yes. something. Because, hey, it's a respected newspaper or it's a respected or an official channel. So, you know, yes. Hazza being an actual presenter. That makes sense. He's got and, a lot of cre yeah. credentials. So he could use his press credentials to get information that mm. would normally be privileged information. Correct. So, I mean, if you're a politician and you get like the press reaches out to you to say, hey, we'd like to interview you about something. You'd be like, OK, yes, I'll do that. But if a random person connected to the Chinese government says, I want to ask you questions, you'll be like, wait, what? Right? So it's like a way to get over a barrier. Yeah, yeah, true. It's a conduit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, he could ask all sorts of very specific pointed questions to gauge the reaction of how Australia might uh, might react to certain things. That makes things, sense. Or that makes a lot of sense. If they figure out if they've managed to catch on to some kind of nefarious thing that the government has been doing, Chinese I government has been doing. So, yes, just to show you that this this guy, mm -hmm. this Richard Vong guy who was caught out red-handed, 
This is not an isolated case. No. This is something very common. Yes, very, very common. And I would like to take this opportunity to put out a little bit of a warning, um, a friendly warning to anyone who deals with the Chinese government or Chinese mm. state media. Um, and that is to be careful. Yeah. Okay, because you, you never know that innocent little thing that you think you're yeah. doing just for a little bit of a payday, because they do this often. They have yeah, approached us. By the way, us. it's not a warning, it's a threat. It's a warning. No, it's a warning. Don't, don't do like little a, odd jobs. Yeah, like for, a yeah. public service yeah. announcement. Yeah. It's like a warning, like don't stick your finger mm. in a plug socket type warning. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That type of thing. I know a lot of people who've taken quick, odd, little dirty yeah. money jobs, okay, to say like, oh, this... This bracelet, this lucky charm yeah. has helped me out, you know, and you know, right. you, you know, it's nonsense, yeah. but you're just doing it. Yeah. The Chinese government gets you to say things, you know, all the time, do yes. little fluff pieces, talk about poverty alleviation or the high speed rails or post this on your Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Or be like, hey, in this guy's case, um, you know, we need you to just pretend to be this guy and ask these questions. Yeah. Yeah. You might think it's like innocent. You might think that it's like, uh, ah, yeah. yeah, maybe it's a little dodgy, but hey, they're paying me like a grand or whatever. Or I'll just do bucks. it or a couple hundred bucks. You have to realize that. I say 200 bucks because someone else did it. Yeah, someone else bucks. did it for 200 bucks. <laughs> someone who looks very similar, <laughs> except if you just didn't have hair. Um, uh, anyway, the thing is, you might think you're doing a little job sure. and it's a little thing, but you sure. could actually be acting as a spy for the Chinese government. It's not and that. You could... It's actually, I mean, it is that, but it's, yeah. it goes higher than that. Yeah. It could be transnational repression. That's what I'm saying. You could be actually getting yourself into massive, massive legal tr massive trouble. Massive problems. Okay, yeah. because what is the purpose of that guy's interview? Clearly to spy on dissidents. Yes, clearly right. to spy on uh, Hong Kong uh, dissidents, to intimidate them, mm. in order to lead to bad things happening yeah. to them, in order to give this intelligence to the Chinese intelligence officials so that they can mess with them and the thing is the best case scenario for this guy is that he didn't know right yeah. they're like a uh, third-party company just like those advertising companies yeah. out of hong kong or shanghai that yeah. reach out to us reach out to all well, those people take right? a look at this this screenshot hello this is susan working for a consulting company That's what and they we're looking say. for someone to write yeah. essays for us marketing or consulting every time okay that that is the person <laughs> who reached out who eventually said basically hey you know what we can use you your yeah. your uh, person your personality as a uh, reporter to ask these questions to politicians and stuff and it's the, not a consulting company mm -hmm. it's the chinese government the thing is like he, the contact would have already been made like that guy the uh, mm -hmm. dutch guy, no, no he's american so yeah the american guy um yeah. <clears throat> he he lived in shanghai for a little while mm. right like teaching english or whatever and that's how the chinese government can make contact with people because they're there right it's probably part of a wechat group probably he yeah. went on a, got a little piece. gig this yeah. is by the way best case scenario best case scenario worst yeah. case scenario is he knew what he was doing sure best case scenario let's say uh they're like we need you to pretend to be this we uh, we know this guy he's a uh, a bad dude or something yeah. and we want to know if you'll pretend to be a journalist we'll give you 200 bucks 500 bucks sure. thousand bucks whatever mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and he's like you know what all right i'll do it it's money right yeah that's the best case scenario best case scenario worst case scenario is he's like i know what you guys are doing i'm willing to participate yeah in or this he even suggests crime. or yeah yeah or he's like hey i think i've got a yeah. good way to get some information you know hey, I this can, is prolific i can pretend to be this Asian journalists. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of foreigners that do get involved in this and yes. know what they're doing. Yes, um, and, and do it willingly. Yeah, and the thing is, like, mm -hmm. nothing has been done about it publicly in the past, you know, especially, yeah. I, I just don't think any anyone's had the book thrown at them, and I think we're going to start to see that happen. Yeah. And maybe, you know, the, the whole, uh, what's it called, the whole way that they do things, we'll have to, they'll have to regroup. Yeah. You know, or, or at least think about how, how to do it differently next time. Because this is a, I mean, I mean, I don't know who this guy is, right? No. And and I'll leave it up to whatever yeah. happens. But... Yeah, but we're not asking anyone to figure out no, who he is, no, no, by no, the no. way. Um, that's uh, up to that's, the that's... relevant authorities yeah, around whatever. the world. The, so if you are covered perhaps, in the news, yeah, if you are perhaps like <laughs> a relevant authority, a relevant authority, I'm sure you've seen the news article. Yeah. Anyway, um, my point is, yeah, is that it's I really. I would think twice, like you said, I'd really think twice about, even if it seems kind of innocent, just yeah. don't get caught up in this kind of stuff. Even if it's like layers deep and you're like way on the outside, I wouldn't get caught up in doing that kind of stuff because yeah. it will probably come back to you. Yes. Um, it mm -hmm. looks like a lot of countries, especially in the West, are taking this very seriously. We've been mm -hmm. reading those um, reports sometimes in, in Worldview yeah. and they it looks like they're taking it seriously now. Yeah. This isn't like 10 years ago. No, exactly. And I so, mean, like, it's easy to get duped. Yeah. 
lots of people have. Remember those kids in Canada got yeah. duped into yeah. thinking they were being part of a the music video? Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but they actually were handed like free Meng Wanzhou posters and stuff, yeah. and they were used as Chinese propaganda. Yeah. So you anything that seems a little sus that's connected to a Chinese firm, a Chinese consulting company, something out of Shanghai, something out of Hong Kong, sure. steer clear um, just for your own safety. Yes. You just don't want to get embroiled yes. in this because this guy... We'll see what happens to him. If anything does happen to him and we hear about it, we'll let you know. Yeah. So um, moving on from this. It was an interesting story. It's and interesting. Channel, I didn't even know what Channel 4 was. Yeah. I'll have to look into what they do. It was a good find. You showed me that. Mm. I didn't even watch the whole thing. So that was a fresh, a fresh reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube react. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm just glad that there are um, investigative journalists who are yeah. willing to look work. into this. Yeah. Great work. Yeah. Because... Yeah. It's no joke, but we've had to deal with this exact thing. Mm -hmm. We've got teams of people that have been trying to yeah, yeah. mess with stuff, us, yeah. you know what I mean? And they do this kind of thing, and we know it's real. And that's why we can present it to you as fact yes. and not like an airy-fairy, this may, may something. This might mm, happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Chinese government is using foreigners yes. to try and spy or yes. get information or meddle or do whatever across the world. So oh, yeah. just so you know. Okay, so anyway, um, on a lighter note... Yeah, you know I have a a Monday show, you know. Um, you do? I said you and I. Oh, I thought you said I have a Monday. No, show. No, I said you and I oh, okay. have a Monday show. <laughs> okay. So either you're not paying attention or your ears got I some am. wax no, no. in it. I am. I do have a little wax. Okay. All right. Good. So anyway, I let's actually don't. A wax I'm, that out. I think I'm. There. I think I'm wax free. Okay, that's good yeah. to hear. So uh, we have a Monday show. It's a VIP show, and um, we'd like to show you what you missed if you weren't there. So let's take a look. There you go. It's like a herding cattle or something. There is a trend right now in China called the Doja Challenge. No. <laughs> the slide whistles. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> yeah, it gives me the shudder. Yeah, let's try it out. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we did so, the Beijing Dojer challenge. We did. And it was interesting. We won't tell you how it was. Um, yeah, we won't tell you that you'd have to see it for yourself. Yes. But uh, basically, for those of you who don't know, we run this VIP show on Monday. And if you want to watch it and you have the means, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and join the Shaban Ho tier. We got some uh, narcs in here that said that pretty much everyone over overwhelmingly said that you said on my show not are you and i no it's yeah. you and i no. you and i have a show yes now you said winston apologize a lot. no they're they're trying to sigh up i know what i said okay you can play it back later i don't care earwax sure. boy yeah <laughs> but okay anyway please go join us for Xiaoban Ho um, yes if you can it's so much fun we hope to see you there this Monday again if you have the means and of course that's the best way to support the show oh yeah and it's fun too super fun always fun we always have interesting little clips and things that we just can't show on <laughs> and you are true someone's been, <laughs> someone backed it everyone else said you said I my 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 it, see, it's just some lame side. You're psyoping. I me. don't fall for this stuff. You might, but it's like that. You can go mess up. Like I could go footsec, footsec. You know. I thought that was like a random number. No, footsec means go away. What? Then why did you? When if you say nineteen footsec, it means nineteen back in like nineteen. Oh, okay. Go away. That's a weird. You know. That is a 19, weird thing. You know, nineteen. Get the hell out of here. It's basically yes. what it means. Yes. So you could say, "Oh, it happened Psy in 19, in chat. Nineteen. Get the hell out of here." You know? <laughs> this is CIA psyop in our chat. Yeah. About, yeah. Did you say my <laughs> or you and I? I said you and I. Yeah. <laughs> Foot sick. Okay. Your bloody bluxum. Let's move on. Okay, to our next segment of the show, which is Wumao Corner. And this time, we actually have an excellent Wumao. Okay. <clears throat> Not a bad Wumao, good Wumao. Like a reverse, reverse, a reverse Wumao. Wumao. Just a, basically a, a troll. Uh, it's, I wouldn't call him a troll. I'd I call would. him a very well thought out dude that a, knows yes, what he's doing. A troll for good. Yeah, a troll for good. A okay. good troll. He, I think of troll as bad, like Shrek. No, no, but he... <laughs> That's an ogre. He, yeah, exactly. No, he, <laughs> he trolls, um, you know, these pro-CCP uh, pro protesters. Yes. Here. Um, so, okay, for those of you who don't know Lola Farley by now, mm. he's a big friend of the show. He's a fantastic guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a comedian. 
Okay. You funny mm. dude. Friend of the show. And he's also one of the one of the few foreigners who I can say is better at speaking Chinese than most Chinese people. Yeah, he's he he's is, uh, so fluent. Yes. You know, he's one of those guys, and you know, I say that, and people might say, "Nah, no, I mean it." Um, you know, when somebody dedicates so much time into studying a language, yeah, yeah. and they learn all the ins and outs, it's like if a um, a Chinese person learns English so well, they know all the grammar rules. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they yeah, come yeah, to yeah. me and they're like, "Oh, did I know you know that's what?" It's ridiculous when you say it's yeah. better than like Chinese, but it's like if somebody is a professor of something. Yeah. Even if you're, I don't know, let's just say like. Your mom was a, a, a pottery expert, right? Mm -hmm. A pottery a pottery professor knows more than you do just because your mom was a pottery expert. Yeah, I mean, the whole point know. is like you somebody could it. come to me and tell me about advanced prepositions or whatever. Sure. Some, give me some grammar rule and, ex and get me to explain it and I won't be able to. Yeah, there's a lot of foreigners that are, <coughs> when I say foreigners, I mean non-Americans that are better at English than you and I. Yeah, right? that, that's, that's what I'm that saying. Logic. Someone yeah. who studied Shakespeare sure. and all right. of this stuff can come here and and out a bunch of nonsense and i'll be like okay man he's one of those yes. guys <laughs> okay. he's a friend of winston's show <laughs> yeah friend of ours a friend of ours a friend of the show yes okay um anyway so he used to be big in china yes okay he used to go and do these huge things part of the new york gala and stuff right because yeah, of his proficiency in chinese so he'd go and stand up on stage and do these big events in china but this guy has morals Okay. He does. Which a lot of people that get involved in the whole China sphere don't. Yeah. Okay. Because they realize that all of their fame and all of their fortune hinges on the fact that they can never criticize China Correct. or the CCP. The Chinese government specifically. Yeah. yeah. And so they have to toe the party line. Yeah. This guy's awesome. He has his own moral compass. And he said no. And he made a decision that he was just going to follow his heart and do the right thing. And so now he... It's very vocal about um, speaking up against the CCP, okay? Now, recently when Xi Jinping came to visit, there was a huge, like basically a huge sub CCP supporters on the streets. A lot of them were bussed in and paid to do this, mm. okay? And you see they're all wearing similar stuff. They all have the flags that they were given, you know, on the bus. They all like had their food prepared for them and stuff <laughs> there. They came there to yes, basically, they yeah, they came there to wave the flag and show support to put up this image that there's this huge amount of support for the CCP in America. Yeah. There were, of course, counter protesters who went there with Taiwanese flags and Tibetan flags and all that. There was scuff there was scuffles. That were not paid with food and bus. Rides. No, they just did it out of their own volition, right? Because <laughs> they believe in it. Yeah, because so. they actually <laughs> believe in it, right? Yeah. Um, there were scuffles. The pro CCP and the anti CCP crowd are both guilty of um, instigating, you know. Stupid scuffles, yes. people getting beaten up with iron poles and stuff, but that's besides the point. The good thing is, I'm going to show you two small clips from his video, and I implore Deep you... penetration. Yes. <laughs> his title. I, yeah, I know. I implore you to go watch his video when you're finished with the show, okay? And turn on the the, the closed captioning on yeah, YouTube, because it'll, it'll give you subtitles. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, oh, no, the subtitles are there, but oh, you have cool. to turn them on. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get us out of here and play these... Two little clips from it, so you can see what it's all about. Oh,我没有,我没有评价的理由,没有,多关注一点大学生的生活,他们的日常。因为,呃,怎么说?你有这个权利,但是你没有理由,对吧?你有这个理由也没这个权利。你有这个权利啊,你在美国呀。习近平
那就呃。A patriot. Yeah. 也许可能还有边缘赛区，还有没有达到的地点？因为所以所以习近平以前公布已经彻底脱贫了是撒谎，没有没有没有不是撒谎，大多数已经脱贫了。中国最大贡献的哪是哪一位领袖？毛泽东。<笑>我我是我中文是不是说错了？我的意思不是死亡人数最多，我说是给中国最大贡献的是哪一位？<笑>毛泽东。哦、oh, 哦、oh, ，OK。人们站起来，不做奴隶。毛泽东。是我说错了吗？毛泽东。对，我以为死亡人数越高，那就等同于这个给国家的贡献越低。<笑>你的毒品。<笑> OK， so um we're not going to obviously translate for everyone at、yes. home. You'd have to watch it, but. One thing you can be certain of is it's full of a lot of this this funny stuff where yeah, he's really、funny. like、um, he tricks them and trolls them into saying、mm. stupid things, and he brings up very valid points.、Mm-hmm. They're here in America, <clears throat> where they're allowed to criticize、mm. anything,、mm. and they do, and they criticize、America. everything about America, everything about Taiwan. But he asks, "Do you have a single thing that you can say that you think should be changed about Xi Jinping's?" You know, reform Whatever, of this、yeah. and this education. None of them could say anything, and they're like, "No, we're not allowed to、because、say that." They're、either. not allowed. It's、yeah. not because they don't want to. They're not allowed、It's、to because they know they can't, and、yeah. that's the difference. It'd be one thing if you were brainwashed <clears throat> to the level of a North Korean official. Yeah. Where you're like, you go out there and you say what you believe, and you believe in the party or whatever. But when you go out there and put out a face、mm-hmm. and say, "I'm allowed to criticize all the things while I'm protesting freely in this free country,"、yeah. but I know I can't say one bad thing about my government, then there should be a little bit of self-realization. Just a little bit, you know. And of course, this is the perfect example. He actually asked the lead up to this question is,、uh, "Who is the greatest leader of、yeah. China?" A lot of people refuse to answer. Those that、yeah. did answer, they either said Xi Jinping or Mao Zedong. Yeah,、um, because those are the two big dogs, right? Yeah, except for be except for I think there's one very、um, uh, honest guy who said Deng Xiaoping,、mm-hmm. which is true.、Mm-hmm. In all the recent leaders, he's the one who's contributed the most to China. He opened yeah, yeah, it up. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like he、uh, actually he also contributed horrific. Yeah, he hor- did. Hor- he's not a good guy. Horrific. No, he's、things. not a good guy. Yes, he's not a good guy. He's he's the Tiananmen Square massacre guy. Yes, but you know at the same <laughs> so, time, you know he literally paved the way China. Today. Yes, exactly. But if you want to talk about like contributing to the economy and all that, he's the greatest. I absolutely agree. The thing is,、um, here's a great example: is when he、um, asked these ladies who is the greatest contributor, they said Mao Zedong, right? And he's like, I thought the higher the death toll, the, the the lower the contribution to the country. Of <laughs> course, which of course they can't handle that. Okay. So what is what is the response? It's like there are drugs here, right?、Mm. So instead of being able to、uh, about talk about、mm. the problems China maybe faces or anything immediately, oh, but America has a drug problem, and you'll find this when you try to discuss anything re- related yeah, to China with nationalists, yeah. with nationalists online or、mm. otherwise.、Mm. When you want to talk about real problems in China. And they're real; they're not made no, up or fake.、No. You're just like, "Hey, let's talk about this issue in China." Immediately, they'll be like, "America has homeless people and yeah. drugs," yeah. you know, or "America has gun violence."、Mm. They will just what aboutism straight away. And, and you go, "Yeah, and yeah." So what? <laughs> Did anyone say they don't? Yeah, that's not what we're talking about, right? And this over here is a real life example of、mm. that what aboutism happening in real time. You know? Yes. But please. If you want to see more, because there's a lot more to that video, that's just a small segment of it. Please go and take a look at his channel. It's linked below. Watch that video after the show, and、uh, maybe leave a comment saying、uh, the China Show sent me. Yeah, he's, he's a friend、good. of the show. He'll like yeah, to see. Yeah, friend、that. of your show, right? Friend of the show. Remember, I said you and I have a show on Monday. It's、yeah. not talking about this show. I know, but he's this, a friend I, of this. Just、show. waiting for you to because people you you haven't been watching the chat, but、no. everyone's saying you're having a coup right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to take take the show and run. Yeah, well,、uh, no, that、shoot. that wouldn't that、ah, wouldn't be、shoot. correct. That wouldn't be correct. Ah, gall, gall, ding it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. Let's move on to <laughs> let's move on to world view, guys, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. Now, I'd like you to take the reins for the next、sure. uh, subject we have here, which is the Jesus take the wheel. Sis, okay. Sis, sis. How would you say that? We were taught by our subscribers because we were calling it CSIS,、mm-hmm. which is China's intelligence bureau, right? <laughs> Canada's Canada. intelligence bureau. Same place these days, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but what would、uh, you call it's it? Po- it's called CSIS. CSIS. It's called CSIS. CSIS.、Mm-hmm. 
Cease, cease and, and desist. desist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's what they want to say mm-hmm. to yeah, these yeah. people getting tricked. <laughs> so ceases. <laughs> okay. Yes. Little ceases pizza over here. Warns of re- <laughs> <laughs> Chinese re- recruitment campaign. Can we ever be serious about Canada? I feel bad for Canada. Canada's, they can take it. They can yeah, take they can take it. They're, yeah, they're great. They're, they're nice guys. Yeah. Uh, ceases. Warns of Chinese I recruitment like you told campaign. I like to take the reins and then you take <laughs> I'm reading it. the you it. I'm reading You're the headline. A coup. You got it's it. true. I got to set know, it up. I was laughing about the psyop, yeah. but I'm starting to believe the audience. I got to read Maybe the headline. Remember that Russian troll? He yeah, said yeah. That, that we're gonna have separate shows in two to three weeks. I'm starting <laughs> to think this is real. Uh, Newt's flesh, we do have separate shows. You know we've got our, yeah, okay, anyway. Ceaseless warns of Chinese recruitment campaign targeting Canadian <sighs> government employees. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> sea milk not yeah. Sea yeah exactly cease and desist mm-hmm. um, anyway mm. uh, so basically Canada spy agency which is CSIS right mm-hmm. they are warning they cease they, well, I know I please I cease, know. cease to exist the aurora's <laughs> flying overhead oh that's another bad news what Canada's planning to replace oh, yeah. the aurora with a new model I heard about that this is not acceptable no they. how are they going to read the radar <laughs> I know <laughs> it's going to be LCD CRT. they'll be like what's this what's this <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll We'll Need follow that up. Yeah, seat. exactly. We'll follow that up. Sorry. We will. The most important news. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, Canada's spy agency is warning of a Chinese plan to recruit Canadian government officials and academics. Mm. In an alert sent to federal employees earlier this month, uh, there's a, a large-scale email campaign trying to lure workers into an overseas talent program. Where have we heard this before? Mm. Uh, and this is the quote from them, uh, from the from the alert. The People's Republic of China is likely using this recruitment campaign to acquire Canadian knowledge and expertise. These types of talent recruitment and technology transfer initiatives can result in misappropriation of government and uh, of government of Canada resources and loss of proprietary and sensitive information. And uh, the alert included a photo of the uh, recruitment email, which they actually had a copy of, uh, which uses the subject line 2024 invitation for overseas talents to apply for global excellent scientists fund in China. Is that not the most <laughs> CCP like yes. intelligence agency jargon yes. you've ever heard? It's like, you'll see that on, on one of those led signs, you know, like, yes. yeah, but no, like specifically <laughs> yeah. with China's intelligence, they're mm. always using like excellent this and you know, like global always, friendship yes, yes. organization. Mm-hmm. That. Exactly that. You see it in a lot of those, um, mm-hmm. A lot of those protests yeah. uh, from those people, they'll set up like this o- overnight. They'll be in like Philly or whatever. Yeah. All right, I'll pick somewhere else. No. Yeah. Uh, in Boston, they'll set up um, a- an organization where it's like the friend patriots of global f- cooperation from Fuzhou. Yes, exactly yeah, and that. They'll like hey, make banners mm-hmm. over and it's still warm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Know? It smudges when you touch yeah. it. Yeah. You're exactly like, right. We hate Taiwan. Yeah, that's it. Anyway. Yeah, um, so yeah. warm yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Anyway, so the email asked for, so the email that people were getting, yeah. so this is not a demo email. This is what people are actually getting, basically yeah. be, trying to be poached, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the email asked for significant personal information, mm-hmm. said CSIS, and promises salaries, and this is where it gets interesting, it is no small amount, ranging from $95,000 is the base. Wow. To three hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars, you can see why Whoa, that's tantalizing. Yeah. You see how much funds the Chinese government's appropriating for this kind of thing. It's nuts. Yeah. Wow. The security alert said that the Chinese Communist Party leverages such initiatives to support espionage and foreign interference activities. Yes. These policies and plans aim to exploit the collaborative, transparent, and open nature of Canada's research and innovation sector to serve PRC's economic, security, and military interests. So. Um, yeah, well, you know, they keep catching those, like, um, university professors yeah. and stuff that on the side they're doing this. Yeah, yeah. But they're running, like, a very important research. But they'll um, do, like, a research, research thing. Yeah. But then they have a thing in yeah. China. This yeah. is because of this kind of thing. Yeah, they, well, know? they've seen great success with it. And it's hard. I think it's hard to nail. Obviously, the U.S. is making examples. But in some other countries that have gone really soft on China mm. and have just not caught up to the U.S.'s type response. Because, like, under the past two administrations, you know, under Trump and under Biden, we've had a very severe response to China and America. Yeah. But a lot of countries haven't, Yeah, right? They've maybe tried to fall in line a little bit with, like, the U.S. But for the most part, I mean, China gets away with, why do you think those people, those Hong Kong people are getting harassed in the U.K.? Yeah. Look at the UK. Look at Australia. Look at Canada. It's, they're not up to the same serious alert. Level. No, they're not. They're not. So I think China's seen a, a huge return on investment, and so people are willing to take the risk. Yeah. Uh, whether it be the mark 
or the actual agents that are trying to do this because Correct. it's working out for them very well. So yeah. why not, right? Yeah. Okay. So just be, if you happen to be, um, again, mm -hmm. this is one of those PSA type things. Yes. If you're working for any governmental organization, you yourself, even if you're just the IT guy who goes and fixes the, the, the computers and the printers in the building that is connected to the government, be wary of being poached by these things and don't yeah, take it lightly. Don't think that it's just a little side job you can do and get a little bit of money. You could get embroiled in some kind of international espionage yeah. nonsense, which is kind of the theme for this episode. Yeah. Because we're seeing this more and more. And I do think we're reaching a level where the rest of the world is starting to take this seriously enough I, I agree. that you yourself could end up with massive charges. Yeah. And I think there's prison. a common running theme that you put together for the show. Mm. And congr by the way, congratulate mm. Winston. You know what makes this coup all the more real? <clears throat> what? You put together the entire show. I and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But it all's fallen in line. Yep. It's all part of it. That's right. <laughs> see, see how you guys like it. If you like it enough, let me know. We could just get rid of some dead weight over here. <laughs> no, but, okay, seriously, well, what though. What would you do without my analysis, though? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah, we'd have a lot less graphs. I'd stats, That's I'll tell you that. very but, true. Yeah. But you guys live and breathe the stats. <laughs> yeah. You need it. Yeah, it's a balance. This is just going to be your story. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Well, maybe we could both talk about it. I don't this. know much about it. Well, it is what it says. <laughs> okay. Chinese prisoner's ID card apparently found in lining of regatta. Is that how you say it? Regatta coat? I would assume, yeah. Okay, so I've now never we... Heard of that brand. What's that? I've never heard of that brand. Oh, no, you know what? I did write some notes here. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, good. So then you can, I did. You can I take did. I'm sorry. Go for it. Uh, it says, an ID card that appeared to b uh, belong to a Chinese prisoner was found in the lining of a coat from the British brand, Regatta. Okay, it's a British brand. Yeah. Raising concern that the clothing was manufactured using prison labor. Of course it is. Uh, <laughs> why would there even be any doubt? No, no, no. No, <laughs> no you understand why? Why? Because they're talking about this specific brand. Oh, that brand. Yeah, yeah. They're obviously we know prison labor in China. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one's being like, I wonder if that. Happens. Do you know why all the garlic comes from China? Is because it's they free. force the prisoners to, <laughs> yeah, basically peel the garlic, and that huge amount of mm. like labor-intensive peeling of garlic, mm. is something no one can compete with. Because here's yeah. the thing, right? Everywhere else in the world. You have to pay the people to do it, right? Yeah. You have to pay your workforce. So let's say XY brand of garlic is yeah. going to be like, okay, we love garlic. We grow it here. Then we have all of our laborers here, mm -hmm. okay, who mm -hmm. we pay that are local. Yeah. Okay. And we got to pay them to pick this stuff, sure. right? Or peel it. And then pack, yes. then we can package it, right? Yeah. So that costs money. And then their product, product ends up costing, say, $10 a can. Yeah. yeah. In China, with that. In China, they're like... We can, not only can we import the garlic from elsewhere or get it grown here or whatever, but we don't need to pay the labor. We just force the prisoners to do it for free. Bingo. Oh, bingo, we're bingo. running out of prisoners. That's okay. Hey, you, you caused a crime. Come here. Come here. You know oh, what I mean? you went yeah. to that protest. Oh, oh did you? Oh, here, you? Get ready. I hope you like garlic. There was this fantastic undercover investigation by an actual person, not by any government, by a person who worked for, a gar for the garlic industry or oh, something. Oh, interesting. A Chinese guy went in there with hidden cameras and nice. filmed the prisoners wow. sl like sitting on the floor peeling garlic yeah. and presented all this evidence and it still didn't result in anything. Wow. They're using prison slave labor to monopolize the garlic market. Years ago, I actually mm -hmm. warned my audience. I said, don't buy made in China garlic because it's prison labor. I, do, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that specifically, but I heard enough about it to where it was a thing. Yeah. Uh, take a look on your garlic the next time yeah. you buy it and see somewhere if it's this product of China. I bet you it does. For sure. They, they have monopolized the, the garlic industry. I know it sounds yeah. stupid, but the garlic industry by using prison labor. Yes. So anyway, that's why this we don't is, know anything about the brand. This yeah, is just this, elegated in the uh, article. Here's another problem with supply chains in China, though, right. is if you're a brand like Regatta, yes. whoever they are, God bless their soul. Okay, this little brand of tiny little, they're probably huge, and we just don't know them. But this brand, they will have ethics. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> because they have to. Not because they want to, but because they have to. If sure. you're an international brand, you have ethics. You can't use slave labor as one of yes. those. Okay? And they put that down as a stipulation. They send their delegation to China to source a factory that's going to make the clothing that's for right. them. Right? They source the factory. They send their managers there to go and check everything out. They check out the supply chain. They get taken around. Because I've had to do this for people. Yeah. You had to do it too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I used to sometimes moonlight as kind mm -hmm. of a sourcing agent. Mm -hmm. I'd go check out electric bike mm -hmm. man, like factories. I did it for electronics, yeah. yeah. There was a company in Colombia that actually got me to do that. And I'd go and check out and make sure the products are okay, the supply chain's good and all that stuff, right? So you check it out, right? 
So the factory that's making them gets the the cotton from this place, gets the material from that place, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then they make your garment. Once you've secured your supply chain and you think everything's Don't bring good. politics into this. <laughs> yeah, well, once you've secured it, you go back uh, to your home country, or maybe you stay in China and you go visit the factory every once in a while, whatever, to make sure everything's running. Yep. And your country, your company is like, a okay. Yep. Right? We are all good. We're not using slave labor. Yeah. We check off the ethics little tick box. Correct. But that factory <clears throat> is going to want to make more money mm -hmm. out of your orders. Mm -hmm. So this happens all the time. Yeah. The factory, rather than sourcing from the um, supplier that, that you approved of, yes. they speak to their, their cousin or something who's got connections with the local government or something to get forced like slave labor quality products from somewhere else at half the, half the price or less. So they can pocket that extra money. They still sell it to you as that and yeah. say it costs that much, but they cook the books and they take the rest of the money for themselves. Yes. So what probably happened here is a situation where this has happened somewhere along the supply chain. Yeah, I wouldn't blame the brand. No, no, it's not the brand. Yeah. No, definitely not. Somewhere along the supply chain, someone has cut corners and taken shortcuts and they're corrupt and they're pocketing some extra money and they've used some kind of slave labor or prison labor and that's how this ended up happening. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Just yeah. wanted to explain it to everyone how it works. People don't maybe know how it works there. No, I think, no, I'm not mm -hmm. moving you on. I'm moving mm -hmm. on the story, though. Sure. I think we, we get the idea. We mm -hmm. have too much to cover, and we're absolutely going long. Okay, quick one. Yeah. Um, this is very annoying for people who are gamers. You know the 4090, the NVIDIA 4090 RTX is like basically the best, coolest card you can have at the moment, pretty much. Yeah. When it comes to gaming. Sure. You want them sick graphics. Yeah. You want to see some 3Ds. Yeah, you want to see You want to see some tra <laughs> like tracing of rays. Yes. You want all that you stuff. You want anti-aliasing. Yeah. You want the RTX on. You want this card. Okay. But guess what? These freaking annoying scalpers are hoarding them to sell to China, oh, which is okay. driving the prices up and making it difficult for legitimate gamers to get their hands on them. Oh, so in Vietnam's like a, these, Vietnam's these people one are being the conduit yes. to sell them at an up, up market rate because they can't get them in China. Yeah, because of uh, <laughs> chip bands and chip stuff. Bands, so, you know, the issue with that is, um, <clears throat> you know, because of all the chip bands, China wants these NVIDIA chips for yeah. their... AI or their whatever nonsense they're doing, they can't buy them directly from the states, so they're buying graphics cards from scalpers, mm. um, and then just taking the chips off or whatever. Lame. It's super lame. If you're a gamer, you're like Chinese government, just f off. Go to Huawei, ask them to make you a chip. They can't. No, they can't. Well, so what? Then just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly anyway sorry to yeah. the gamers yeah exactly so gamers now you know who to blame when you're 40 90s and out of stock or very expensive yes mm. shall we move on yeah we shall how much material do we have today well taiwan's president tsai ing-wen says that china is too overwhelmed to invade mm -hmm. so there is this is a very quick thing okay um a lot of speculation that china is going to invade taiwan very very soon right yeah always is always is um and it uh, keeps the war machine going. <laughs> it also keeps uh, people scared. Yeah, and it, it keeps, keeps the Chinese populace happy. Keeps the Chinese populace happy. At the same time, it also makes the world realize that it probably will happen at some point. So even sure. if it's not going to happen right around the corner, it probably will happen. Ch sure. China's definitely gearing up for it. Oh, yeah. However... Has been since the 40s. Yes, it's quoted that... Um, well, I'll, I'll paraphrase, but basically Taiwan's leadership is currently saying that China is so encumbered right now with their own domestic issues and economic woes that they're not going to have any sort of ability to invade Taiwan anytime soon, mm. right? Which is refreshing and very nice to hear when every other article is like, get ready, this is the big one. <laughs> sure, sure, you know sure. I mean? <laughs> Nice little wet blanket over yeah. that fire. Let's hope that uh, yes. that's true. I like this version of things. Yeah, I like this, this mm. timeline. Yeah, this better. timeline's my best. This is the what best do we say? anime crossover. What, what do we say? This is our no. best choice. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's our no. Best, that's our best choice for timeline. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, here's some more hoarders and scalpers. Just so oh, I just, you just wanted to like, I just break wanted, up the story yeah, a little bit? just wanted that to throw sense. it in just to show you. Hey, guys, remember when you ordered your 4090? <laughs> there it is on someone's living room floor in uh, in Vietnam getting ready to be sent over the border into, into China. Nice. Isn't that awesome? Oh, well. Well, it is what it is. Uh, what just, a, here? just a quick one. No surprise. Um China is emitting a, 
uh, greenhouse gas that it agreed to curb. So, oh, okay. you know, here's the thing. Uh, China ratified in an agreement. Um, what was it called again? Uh, there's a stupid agreement. What's it called? Um, the Paris uh, Agreement? No, it's another agreement. It's some, there's always... It's the a, cooperate Friendship International. The, the agreement friend. where they said they were going to stop <laughs> releasing this damn annoying, um, very bad greenhouse gas. Okay. <clears throat> So the one that's 14,700 times more potent than uh, CO2? Yes, that one. Oh, okay. So China releases all in Asia, like all of the release of that chemical is China, like 97% yes. of it, right? China's been doing environmental crimes for the longest time, right? So they signed an agreement. I'll figure out what that agreement is in a minute to say that they're going to stop because it's very easy to. You can put very like um, when you're developing this chemical or whatever they're doing, you can yeah. mitigate it. It's like putting a catalytic converter on your car. Sure. It doesn't cost a lot of money and it can be done. And they, yeah. said, they said they will do it moving forward. Yeah. They said they're going to do it. Sure. But of course, the actual air quality sensors and stuff in South Korea are telling a different story. Ah. Uh. And that it's worse than before. Oh, I understand. And that they didn't do anything yeah. about it. They just Color made it worse. Me shocked. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, ratified the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Kigali. Protocol. Okay. That's an interesting agreement. Yes. So if you guys want to know about the Montreal Protocol. And I don't uh, know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> this coup over here. It's, you're making fun of me for stats. <laughs> like you're bringing up the Kigali agreement Dude, it's a in binding, the Montreal Doctrine. But this is this is a binding international agreement, okay? <laughs> that <laughs> seeks so. to curb emissions of climate warming HFCs, Hy synthetic gases. Hydrofluorocarbons. I know that. Yeah, and they're they're gases primarily used for air conditioning and refrigerating. <laughs> the agreement entered into uh, force China. Uh, into force in China on September 15, 2021, requiring the country to reduce their HFC 23 uh, emissions. Descent. To Descent. the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you know, et cetera, Descent et cetera. Descent against the coup. Yeah. Except here's the problem, okay, is that they signed and said that they would, but the air quality things are saying they didn't. Well, I know why. Why? Because. The South Koreans have a source, but China, what was China's source? Oh, yeah, China's <laughs> source they said is... No, right? My source yeah. is that I made it the f*** <laughs> up. Okay, uh, there was something I wanted to read out of this. Um, uh, so the HFC emissions from uh, eastern China in 2019 equated to nearly 10,420 tons, according to the study, which was, <laughs> which was equal to the annual greenhouse gas emissions of 31 wow. million cars or 37 coal... Uh, Fired power plants. Who cares? Those freaking ships that run that crude oil, you know, <laughs> yeah, those transportation, yeah, yeah. what's that, 50 million yeah, cars for 500 one? million or so. I don't what know. Die? Anyway, here's the thing China's releasing, um, you know, in just in 2019, the same as a whole year's worth of 31 million cars, um, all 37 coal fired plants. But don't forget, that's on top of their already hundreds of coal fired power plants or whatever they have right now. Yeah. So that's yeah. on top of that. Yeah, true. So just a quick reminder that when China talks about being this green energy, renewable thing, it's all bullshit. Yeah. It's all bullshit. This, you can look it up. Please read the article. Um, this just proves once again that they say and promise something, but they lie about it. Like everything else, China has broken every promise it's ever made with regards to the environment, with regards to territorial areas like the south mm. china sea you know they break every single promise mm. bar none really yeah you know yeah so um i think that's it for this except for this last thing which you could talk about i don't know much about it well again you, you can, made this you can show. you can read the headline Ukraine blows up two railway connections between russia and china there uh, we go kiev's saboteur strike deep in enemy territory with russian media reporting that authorities are investigating it as a terror attack. Why would it be a terror isn't attack? They're at war. Is, isn't that war? Isn't that just normal war <laughs> stuff? They, That's not. They get invaded. <laughs> exactly. They invaded. Uh, anyway, um, this is significant because, of course, uh, Russia is relying on China greatly mm. for um, supplies. You know, when it comes to the the war effort and stuff. Mm. You know, as we've seen, there's a lot of back and forth between China and Russia. A lot of support going both ways. So this is a big significant thing to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Anyway, right. let's freaking get some questions because right. this has gone on. You've made a great show, by the way. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Other than the coup. Yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's, na- that's <clears throat> nasty. It's a nasty yeah. thing to do to me. If I was going to do a coup, it would be much better than this, dude. It would be a hostile takeover. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? Push me out of my chair and stuff. Yeah, it'd be very hostile. Tip me over. Yeah, exactly. I'd throw yeah. the whole table over. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> anyway, um, it's time for us to go into Yam Chow, which is our questions and answer uh, segment where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Um, yes, let's Of begin. course, we leave it up for the weekend and we leave it up live, but we take it out of the show on Monday. If you want to watch the whole show ever with the Q&A intact, you can always join the patron at any tier and you get that plus access to our Discord server. That is correct. 